Hello and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where wow, 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 what a video I have for you today. Honestly, it's going to be absolutely amazing. We are going to be covering the Bitcoin chart. We are going to be going in depth on the analysis here and you are going to be learning a lot today. Trust me, trust me, trust me. Just focus, focus, focus on this video. Block out all distractions. Tell no one to speak to you for the next 20 to 30 minutes because you are learning today. Honestly, it's a good one. It's a really, really, really good one. And um, well, without further said or do, I suppose, let's get into what we are talking about today. And that, of course, is Bitcoin technical analysis and how this is just an absolute joy, an absolute, not only a joy, but also a full on gold mine to be trading right now. The trades are going very well indeed. So let's share this and let's begin. So I hope you have your notepads ready and waiting because, as I said, we are going to go very in-depth in today's video. It's going to be a bit of a longer one, but trust me, you want to pay full attention during the whole of the video. We're going to work it in the same structure as normal, and that is reviewing the past, you know, 48 hours of price action, primarily this rise leading to the drop. Okay, we're going to cover that so you can educate and learn, and then we're going to be looking at what's happening now moving into the week price action ahead of us. So we'll be going over those targets that we have on the current trades. Uh, so we got a bit of everything in this video, but the number one thing is you pay attention because you are going to learn. Let's begin. So obviously the last public video that I made, it was, you know, during this rise to the upside, we were obviously trading within that pitchfork. Okay, we were bouncing off the bottom of the pitchfork, moving through the middle of the pitchfork. And we were obviously bumping into the, the first level of resistance that we had there, which was the PDPOC coming in at $49,500. I just want to spend a few minutes talking about this because it's, it's truly, absolutely fundamental that you have an understanding of order flow because it is just going to dramatically change the way you approach trading and the amount of wins that you are taking. OK, let's just think of this for a minute. Let's pretend we didn't have any idea of the order flow. We have no idea what, of what order flow is. Let's just pretend we haven't learned it yet. We approach this and we think, OK, we have 49,500 level of resistance. Let's say, oh, you know, maybe I can short here with a stop loss above $50,000. OK. You know, th this is what I would call trading off of hope. You hope that this level holds as resistance. You hope your stop loss doesn't get hit and you're just, you're just waiting and hoping for the best. OK, and now let's add in what we do know, and that is order flow. So we have an alert set at 49,500. OK, we have an alert go off when that price level hits and we zoom into the chart to look at what is actually happening. The statistical data in front of us with the volume, with the delta, with the open interest to make a very well informed decision. So we look at that in the time and we know to ourselves, we think of this question, is this a good short? Yes or no? That's the only thing we care about because I'm not interested in a long. <laughs> and the only thing I'm thinking here is, is this a good short hitting the PDPOC? And the answer is simply no. Why was the answer no? Because we were seeing the open interest increasing with, you know, positive delta coming in with the volume coming in at that candle, 50 million. All of this coming together is a really simple answer of no. This is not a good short position based off of the order flow that's coming in. Everything here is pointing towards higher. Unless we had that MS change, which did not happen. OK, that would have been a trigger for a short. But because it did not happen, and that's very easy to say that it didn't happen, we simply have to wait for higher. We have to maintain patience on the shorts and look for higher prices. Yeah. And obviously rewatch the last video called Sell the Bitcoin Rally. Um, the last five minutes of that video, because obviously that's when I was going over live in the time, no sort of hindsight, just exactly what's happening and saying, I don't think this is a good short because we haven't got any trap traders at the moment. If we get the MS change, then yes, it is. But simply at the moment, I would not short. And what happened five minutes later, we obviously smashed through that PDPOC and we head to the top of our para of top of our pitchfork. Okay, this when I give a pitchfork, you just have to remember it because <laughs> we pretty much run the market when we have a nice pitchfork. But obviously, this is when you then moved up to three major levels of confluence. So what did you have up here? OK, let's talk you through it. Well, you obviously, so this is the, the wick, by the way, that obviously referred to this pitchfork. We all know it's rejected now, but this is obviously what we were looking at. We had the top of the pitchfork. What did we have as confluence? Well, when we take our Fibonacci from the high of the, obviously, the top of that pitchfork down to the low of the time, 
and we move this across, we can see we hit into the CC here as well. Okay, so we look here at the, the, the top, you can see the top of the wick is $50,237. Obviously, this is the buy bit chart. And we wick into this, the CC there and obviously get our rejection. So we have not only the top of the pitchfork, we also run into the CC and then we also see, well, you obviously see some trap longs on top of this. And then we did get the MS change. And I'm talking about the one minute chart here for, for the people that are wondering what time frame I refer to. One minute chart. We saw our MS change on top of three levels of major technical confluence. Remember, the, the, the first one at 49,500 was just one. So this is always a, a risky trade. <laughs> but nevertheless, when we moved up to the top of that pitchfork, we had three major levels of confluence. And then we obviously see the MS change, just giving great confidence to take that short. At this moment in time, if you're truly trading the charts, if you truly, you know, have learned what I what I preach and teach here, it's this is a short position, that there's no reason why we would not take that short. After seeing the three levels of technical confluence hold, the reaction being strong, and then an MS change on top of that, what reason would we not take this short? Okay, and obviously we hit into that pitchfork and we all know the reaction that we had. Well, actually, no, this was a this was a pretty funny, uh, this was the funny uh, <laughs> magical line, as we call it. While we were hitting that round, that 49,500, the magical line shows us coming up to just above $50,000 before where do we come down to? Of course, that level we've been very much ready and waiting for. <laughs> The DNPOC, obviously, that come in at $46,875. But I just found this one hilarious. More Draw a, draw a line. And of course, <laughs> the line's going to get respected. But um, yeah, the most important thing is that we, you know, we were aware of this level below us that we were you know, obviously interested in longing. Again, once again, based off of the reaction. So once we have rejected from that top of the pitchfork, managed to get into short positions, what are we looking for? Well, really simply, I remind my team after, the, you know, this is after we've seen that rise and drop, really simply, with the only level I've got an alert for, the only level I care about is this DNBOC. It's the, it's the only level of importance to me right now. It's the only level that I cared about, okay? It's the only trade that was left, okay? Really simply. Just emphasizing that, I obviously emphasized it, I think, well enough in the video that I made. <laughs> but then just in front of the team, you know, champions group, just emphasizing, you know, this is the only level I have the alert for. Okay. And then we hit it. Yeah, we hit it. And so this is then action time. Action stations. Let's get ready for the big trade. This is the one, and you know, this is the big one we've been waiting for. Look at the respect that we had a look at the confluence. So not only were we at the bottom of the pitchfork here, but once again, a brilliant, brilliant touch of the bottom of the pitchfork. We have the bottom of the pitchfork and we have finally hit that DNPOC. And I emphasize greatly, trade off of the reaction. I personally would not preset along here. I would trade based off the reaction. If, the re if, it, if it shows it's holding, you know, we got to trade it. We got to trade the long. And then once again, like we knew to not short here and we got $1,000 higher. Look at this that I was posting in the time as it was happening. Please verify this for yourself with the timestamps here. Post at 11. Okay, so uh, 22 minutes past midnight, obviously UK time. Please go and verify this yourself because it's, it's pretty impressive. So I posted this as it's literally happening, as it's happening live in the time. Okay, no hindsight here at all. I posted in the group, obviously it's a little bit of a joke, Blood Diamond on the eight hour chart. Obviously we're referring to uh, people that love to trade market cipher, which in my opinion is obviously just a total joke and scam. But nevertheless, it's a total joke on them that's saying, hey, look, there's a Blood Diamond. They're all jumping into short positions and just look at the order flow that we see here. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. This is what we call trap shorts. So we see a lot of aggressive shorts. Look at this. Open interest is, is getting that increase. But this time we do get the MS change and they do become trapped. And it's on le that level of confluence, high confluence that we've been waiting for. So you see the wick down below the level. Look at this. We are then trading back, you know, just about to trade above $47,000. And then we are left with these millions of, of shorts trapped at the lows. I mean, look at this. It's, it's, it's with your imbalances. It's heavy trapped shorts. And we know they're trapped because we have then moved, we move back above the level level. Okay, so if we are truly trading the charts here, we recognize we've waited for the reaction, we have seen trap shorts, and we've actually seen a reaction that the level is holding. Yeah, the level is, is holding right now. Okay, so if we understand that, and we have the confidence, exactly like this guy says, let's go back to the top of the pitchfork. Why would we not expect another rally? <laughs> it's actually a very easy trade. I longed everything. Power of the CC pool. Organic growth is going to be arriving. Of course, god damn those wells running the market with their games. 
I come in here and say, it's really not that difficult, okay? The level, we're going to be nailing the exact bottom that we've been waiting and waiting for. It's come, it's hit. We've seen the trap shorts. Not only that, we've now seen the little wick through the level. What more do we want? What more do we want, ladies and gentlemen? There's nothing else that we can want. And uh, yeah, the Blood Diamond shorters, well, unfortunately, they're going to be getting liquidated once again, I believe. Probably already have, but no surprise there, if, if we're honest, is there? So yeah, that CC pool again. We were ready. We were waiting. We saw the order flow. We saw the reaction. You know, obviously, we're ending up in long positions here. OK, and then we move along. So it's a simple case of making that plan, being ready for the level, seeing the reaction on the order flow, seeing it not only in the order flow, but a, a simple wick through the level. And then, you know, what more do we want? We got to we got to be taking those trades then. OK, obviously, with that confluence off the bottom of the pitch, what we get that initial reaction. You know, everything is going very, very well indeed here. Yeah, really simply. Personally, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, OK, I'm looking to take profit one, move that stop loss to entry. And, you know, I'm, 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 I'm away for the weekend. Let's see what happens when I come back Sunday night and come back Sunday night. Obviously, a very happy man because we well, let's just let's just load this back up. We obviously move all the way up to, you know, once again, above $50,000. Well, that, that's the initial talk through that I wanted to do of the prior price action, bringing us on to what's happening right now. OK, so I'll just, you know, rephrase this one one more time just for a really big emphasis. Initial move up that we saw looking at the order flow live in the time knew not to short 49,500 was more than prepared to wait for higher. We got higher to the top of the pitchfork. That's when we then banged into really let big levels of confluence and we had the confirmation with the MS change. Okay, then it's a simple case of recognizing what we're looking for next. Once we have seen that move above 50K, we've got the short entry based off of the reaction, we're then looking for lower. We really simply maintain looking for lower, really simply looking for lower. It's the only level of interest that we have. Let's just be patient and wait for the level that I give. <laughs> and then we get to that level, we see a very nice reaction. We see it in the order flow, not only in the order flow, but also just really simply within the candlesticks. Everything's coming together and bam, thumb shorters get liquidated once again. What can we say? And it all just came down to having that, you know, really sound, well thought through plan. Yeah. And I just want to say this. How often is it on a public video that you ever see me give a DNPOC? It's normally the daily, weekly, monthly levels. Yeah. How often is it that I give one of those? <laughs> So if you didn't think that was going to work, hey, <laughs> you will be surprised. Uh, as I say, I give a level, it gets respected and you cannot deny that it got respected. So that obviously brings us up to where we are right now. OK, so we're going to be understanding now what we're looking at today and what we're looking at in the week to come. I just want to do two really, really quick announcements here. They're for your own benefit. The first one is just take care once more, ladies and gentlemen, please. A lot, a lot, a lot of scammers impersonating us doing fake telegram groups, do fake discord groups. You just got to really take care. I am never, unfortunately, you know, I'm just never going to message any anybody via a direct message. Yeah. Uh, it's just why on earth would I do this? Um, so just take care. People are impersonating us. You know, they're using pretty clever ways. You know, this looks kind of like our name. This kind of looks like our name. Like this is a, you know, they're just changing one or two letters. It kind of looks like a very good impersonation. But if you just remember, Daniel's never going to message me. Of course, this is a scam. Again, okay? the other thing to remember is we never use Telegram. All of the Telegram groups are a full on confirmed scam. Take care. OK, and just use your use your brain for a second. Sorry about that. This is about three hours later. I'm going to continue with the video. I had to run out and do something really urgently. But uh, yeah, here we are. I'm going to continue with the rest of the video now. Totally throw me off. But here we go. Uh, yeah, I was just warning people, basically, be really, really, really careful of the spelling. Just understand I'm never going to message you first. Uh, we do not use Telegram. All Telegram groups are confirmed scam. We don't have other discords. We have one account on every social media. It's the correct spelling of chart champions. Everything else is a scam. Just be really, really, really careful understanding that. Yeah, we've done a lot of warnings. Also, like on the YouTube comments below, you're going to get people saying messages on WhatsApp just this is obviously a scam yeah <laughs> chartchampions.com the only website this is our only social medias everything else just just kind of use common sense and understand it so hopefully i've done enough warnings on that and the second announcement that i wanted to do was uh we are in a femex trading competition obviously i don't really trade on this exchange very much but we like to join their competitions because generally we do very well in them and if you want to join this one you can obviously come across click on the link which i'll leave in the comments down below you can click join our team uh, the code of our team is CDLTM. Obviously, type in an email, 
password, make an account, and, and you'll be in our team for the competition, which starts in uh, two days, I believe, one and a half days. So yeah, if you want to do that, join that team, join it today. Uh, leave that in the comments down below. So those were the two announcements, yeah? The first one, be really careful with all the scammers that are around. The second one, if you want to join the trip team for the Femex comp, you'd be more than welcome. And now we come back over to the Bitcoin chart. <laughs> yeah, about two uh, two hours later. If you, I think this is kind of interesting. I had to run out to basically manage to get another property added today. And, um, you know, I, I think I'll like put this out to you. Like, are you interested in a video talking to me about like the properties that we're doing? Uh, you know, we've got lots of different like, businesses running left, right and center at the moment. But this is one that I do think is fairly interesting because of the fact uh, it's kind of relatable to a lot of people like want to get into into this. I don't know if like if it's interesting to you. I've I've now got you know a lot of experience in this itself. Uh, started you know just from scratch and building it all up, and then um, you know I've learned some tips and tricks along the way of how I deal with it and manage the people that actually manage it for me, like all the communication that side of thing and everything along the way. Like I don't know if you're interested in a video about rental, how you rent them out for for passive income or you know, from the small one house properties to the big, you know, big apartment block flats. So it's, if you're interested in that sort of thing, let me know. And, uh, you know, I'd be more than well, more than happy to do a video on that. Because for me, it's actually, you know, an interesting side venture. So yeah, if you want to let me, if you want me to talk a video about that, I'm more than happy to. Because I do think I've, I've learned some quite interesting things. Anyway, back over to Bitcoin. Yeah, so two hours ago, we were obviously da -da 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 -da, hovering up and around uh, 48,000, 49,000, no? Then I had to run out and do this, and now we're back. So, uh, yeah, really simply, uh, obviously, I've been thrown massively off track, to be honest. I was on, like, a roll. Um, <laughs> obviously, yeah, we have seen a, a fairly substantial move to the downside overall, okay, coming back down towards the DNPOC. This is obviously, we can still obviously say this is a support level. I would personally obviously like to see moves down below the last low. So, obviously, we're looking at this as, as, as a box of support. And I do think one wants to take a bit of, you know, kind of a little bit of caution. I don't think you want to go all, all in like times 100 leverage. All I would recognize is, of course, this is support until it's lost. So I am not going to advocate taking shorts down here because I do not short when price is moving down aggressively. Just like the other day when we were breaking up here, I do not long into resistances, just as I'm not even interested in a short down here. Of course, we can go much lower, but you know, I hold shorts from higher up. It's just like, this is not a place where I'm even thinking about shorting, yeah? So the only things, you know, the only trade I'm looking for here is a long, okay? So it's like, the, the, the thing on my mind is, is there a long here, yes or no? Okay, personally, I would like to obviously see, you know, I think the easiest trades are the swing failure pattern type trades where we will be breaching the low. Okay, so that would be my preferred scenario. If I miss a trade, I'm, I'm you know, I'm okay with that. I'm totally okay with missing a trade. The worst thing I think I can do is, is, get wrecked on a trade or not necessarily wrecked, but lose a trade for unnecessary reasons when I haven't had an entry trigger. So yes, we are reaching our first level of support here. I would personally obviously like to see at least at the very least a wick through it. And if we don't see that, we don't see any sort of failed auction, then we can actually look for lower. And our next support to the downside is, is going to obviously be this, this CC taken from the low up to the high. That gives us around, you know, around $45,000-ish dollars. Okay. Anywhere I mean, definitely viewed as a zone, just as I would Honestly, say where we are now is obviously our support zone. Let's type, type, put this in green just to make sure people understand. So this is obviously our first support zone. And I'm going to say that this is a zone as well. We don't need to look at it. Well, the, the, you know, this easy already is a zone, but emphasizing we can see, you know, slight front runs above it, slight wicks down below it. So it definitely has to be viewed as a zone. Like I would not preset on any of these levels. You know, I'm not just going to sit, a, sit a, we're pl place a limit order there and walk away. No, no this for me is way too risky. Uh, much better to, you know, have like I have here, like an alert set, you know, set the alert, wait for the, wait for the alert to go off, check the reaction, just like we were checking the reaction here, just like we are checking the reactions down here. It's the same process. Set the alert, wait for the reaction. Okay, you can see the two alerts that I had. I actually set both of these alerts. Actually, this one I've had set for a little bit over uh, two days. This alert, alert I set before um, before I had to run out, basically, because I thought, okay, if we break, breach, change the market structure, this would have been down on a much lower term time frame. I thought to myself, okay, if we take the highs up here, you know, we might see a little bit of a rally. But until we until that alert goes off, you know, I'm just going to, Kind of expect lower at the moment. Well, this is the alert that basically I had that I would be interested in trading. And my next two alerts of it, well, I'm still keeping that one right now. Uh, could we have put in the low here? Potentially, but we still have bearish 
market structure on, on every time frame. So I'm not that hopeful at the moment, I suppose. Or I'm just not trading it at the moment. If it bounces from here, it moves up without me. I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, obviously, then I have the alert set just slightly below this this last wick, you know, ready for a swing failure pattern, ready for a failed auction. If we get no reaction off of there or, or, or a weak bounce and the bearish market structure continues, just look at this on the five minute chart. And it's clear as day with our, high, with our lower highs and lower lows, even down here on the five minute. Yes, we've got an initial bounce, but it's still a lower high from our last high here. Okay. So what gives us a probability that this is increased, that it's the low here and another bounce off the daily um, uh, PRC here, well, then we'd, we, you know, it, it would be at least a change of market structure. While this is still, you know, extremely down, then, you know, I'm not, I'm not why would I want to think this time is different sort of thing? So, um, you know, the way that I'm approaching this is sensibly, you know, sensible trading. I'm not, I'm not out here shouting for the moon. I'm not out here shouting for you know the, uh, the the lows i'm just saying hey i know the next level of support i would be interested in in a long um i wouldn't go all in on this i wouldn't sort of um necessarily think it's you know i'm just going to trade what happens yeah i'm not i'm not a massive bull at the moment i'm not a massive bear at the moment i'm just uh, fairly neutral why am i fairly neutral because we are at support right now but we are still within a, a bearish trend on every single time frame on you know locally here every time frame we look at is still bearish market structure change that we start to change the probabilities that we can see a, 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 a rally from here and this is holding once again but unless that happens unless we see the market structure change why would i not look for lower and the answer is i am going to be looking for lower at least down to that wick well at least, you know just emphasizing it one more time at least down to take those lows if not to the cc and if we obviously find no support there then lower once more again OK, so as mentioned, you, why I placed the alert where I placed this alert was for a change in the market structure. OK, at the time, obviously, now it's, it's a lot lower. So we could say our first alert could be moved up to an hour around, you know, 47,800. That would give it a higher probability that we at least we can start to put in a basing pattern here for a rally. Uh, things to bear in mind right now, are obviously, the, the stock market is slightly, you know, slightly is, is pulling back today. And there, there is a correlation, of course, between uh, the stock market and Bitcoin. So the stock market heavily down, uh, Bitcoin also heavily down. Uh, obviously, the CME gap is now filled. So we had that CME gap last night. Opens, you know, big gap to the upside. That is obviously now totally filled. So the CME gap is filled. The stock market is bearish. Um, Bitcoin is is obviously in a local downtrend. We could we could class this as bearish, I suppose. Um, doesn't mean I'm going to short where we are here. You know, I'm just not interested in a short here. Hold shorts from you know thousands of dollars higher. Why would I short support? Uh, of course, this support can be lost and flipped to resistance. And if that's the case, I look down towards the next level of support. The only way I would get into a long where we are here is to see some sort of absorption happening, which I will tell you. Um, if we have this on the local term time frame, so if we come down to like a two minute chart, um, no, so we don't have any absorption. It's actually not looking that great. So this for me is not a trigger to enter along. Absolutely, definitely not. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really content to just stay in the shorts, not hold any underlying bias. You know, like I, I think it's, it's very unhealthy to hold a bias. Um, you know, trade what's happening. That means you have to be open to trading longs. You have to be open to trading shorts. If you take a long position, you have to know where your invalidation is and your stop loss to get out of that trade. Yeah, just as it's important to know where your target is on the trade. That's the only thing I'm thinking about when I enter. Where am I right on this trade? E.g. the target. Where am I wrong on this trade and I want to get out? The worst thing that you can do is, buy, for instance, buy. I think the majority of people are interested in buying Bitcoin. The worst thing that you can do is buy Bitcoin use high leverage i would never i would never recommend high leverage but the worst thing that you can do even worse than this maybe is buying and holding on to a losing trade past where your stop loss should be you know you think oh yeah this is where i'm wrong on the trade but i'm not going to place a stop loss and then it goes down even more and you're like oh you know it's going to bounce up and then it goes down even more and you're like oh, i'm not going to close this trade because it's going to bounce at some point and then it goes down and it goes down and it goes down and you're just like why did i not place a stop loss eg please don't let that happen to you you know learn from your mistakes it's a mistake you know, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody's going to probably do that once in their trading career, at least once, to be fair. Like, but everybody's probably has, has or will do that at one point in their career. But the, the thing that you cannot do is it's fine to make that mistake. But if you keep on repeating that mistake, it's no longer a mistake. And it's a, an extremely bad habit that you need to work on and, and stop <laughs> because otherwise you, you're going to run out of money. Um, and that's, you know, you don't want to do that. So, um, yeah, that, this is the way that I'm approaching this.
again, I, I'm not going to lie, I got totally thrown off, thrown off my flow because I was in a really, really, really good flow or making the first part of this video and then I had to run out and I'm not going to lie, I got totally thrown off my flow, but I hope the, the final finale of the video was was nevertheless okay. Um, and I suppose I'll just end with this. If you if you have enjoyed, you can obviously hit that like button. Always really is a nice way to say thank you. If you do want to see the videos about the properties, uh, you know, I've got quite a few side adventures going on at the moment. Like, um, yeah, so much stuff I could talk about. Uh, I mean, this is the, probably the easiest one or the thing that most people are interested in because it's not like you know you can kind of get started on this with not so much money of course having money and a lot of money helps but you don't need a lot of money to get started in property um you know because you can start with very 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 small properties and build your way up to complexes etc cetera, etc cetera, you know or do it all <laughs> like i do but um yeah if you're interested in that you can you know leave a comment down below and I'll, I'll be more than happy to do it um final words on bitcoin L lose the biases you know, lose the biases trade what's happening if you lose support look down to the next level if we manage to build up a base see some absorption look for a move up to the next level yeah uh, it's as simple as that and uh, I, I kind of apologize that i got thrown off my flow because <laughs> i kind of feel like i'm not in the flow but um yeah i hope you understand why like when you have to run out it's, it's yeah you kind of just lose lose the, the zone i suppose so um anyway i hope you've enjoyed nevertheless i hope it's been helpful and i just say thank you ever so much everybody um take care with all these scam accounts like we only have one and it's spelt correctly um if you want to see that video and the femex team i'll leave that in the comments so um yeah thank you ever so much i'm going to be having the alert set you can see where my alerts are you can copy that if you want and um yeah have a good day thank you ever so much and cheers thank you bye <laughs>